with Kristen because I think she's had enough abuse. I feel it'd be better if Kristen did die. You know who I want to come home. Are you ready to change your life? start on our tracks, the evidence has come back onto Beck's crime scene. As you know, the wreckage of General Hayden to Beck's limo was found flipped over in the woods. Although there is no body, the presence of brain and, and blood indicate that he has been a victim of a murder. So we're going to cross them off our suspects list, OK? Uh that would explain why there's maybe no sweepers. Uh, they uh, truly have no one to follow now, except possibly the uh, Reverend. Allegedly, Reverend Rusty was driving that limo, and he's still missing. In the quiet town of Sunrise, Maine, a killer is on the loose. <laughs> a reward has been offered to 10 ordinary people been sent to Sunrise to play the killer's twisted game. Welcome to Sunrise. Now, they must enter the mind of a killer and solve the mystery before they are eliminated one by one. Investigators. From now on, the lifeguard will be going out into the field with the other investigators. However, the lifeguard will still be exempt on the third day from playing the killer's game, and the lifeguard will still have the duty of keeping contact with me. To decide who the lifeguard is, we have to watch the last will and testament of our uh, last person eliminated. If I don't return, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make Angel the lifeguard. He's trustworthy, everyone loves him, and he just he gives it his all. We need that kind of person for our lifeguard. I made a promise to her that she would vote me lifeguard so that I can vote for Jeff. And letting him know how it feels to be sent out continuously until he is voted all. OK, most recent killer clue recovered last night. Give me a briefing of what happened. An x-ray drove me over into the compound. As I walked in, a huge ball of fire erupted. Yeah! Lit up. Oh. S out. Order, strength, logic. So then what happened after the ball of fire? I saw the flowers with uh, this piece of paper attached to it. It was like a torn bill or something, and there's a close-up of it. But it also has a logo. Coat of arms. Yeah. It's like in a fraternity or anything. Right, some type of coat of arms. It is the focus of one of the tracks I'm going to assign today, so let's get into that. The first track will be the killer clue team. Now, the mayor has been around this town for years and years. I want this track to go down and talk to the mayor, find out what he knows about the OSL logo, if anything. Yes, sir. Track two is going to be the DeBeck murder team. I want you to search DeBeck's smash limo at Connor's garage for any evidence. We also know that the Reverend has disappeared. Let's try to locate him. If we find Rusty, let's question him, because he may be a suspect or he may be a witness in this. Let's find out which and what his story is. We collected some evidence yesterday with the initials OSL on it. Oh, no. It's scaring me now. When I was a kid, we had some crimes. And there was a guy that had OSL tattooed on his arm. He was a bad person. This guy would terrorize the town. But I know he got 30 years in a mental institution for the criminally insane in New Hampshire. Wow. And here's the funniest part. He got released. Now he's the custodian of the building. What is this man's name? Do you remember? Here. Yeah. Orlando Whist. Bad, bad man. Turns out that the guy's a criminal. 
murder, rape, robbery, everything. Mayor says he had the town afraid of him. Angel. Angel, it's Gary. This name you came up with, Orlando Whist. I've made arrangements for you to fly to New Hampshire to talk to his employer. It was on its back up at Harris Point. This is roll. That's all roll. Yeah, it looks like it lost so control to me. Connor would have had a reason to kill DeBeck. She wanted to keep the $250,000. And if she thought that the general was going to come and try to get it from her. So yeah, Connor could handle herself. I don't care about this guy. Back to back. I could care less. I found what I wanted. I got a gun casing. That's it. That's, there was nothing else in that car. This is yours, Connor. Thank you for your assistance, Connor. When we got to New Hampshire, we met with Ernest Tolman. Hey, you doing? Fine, how are you? Very well. He was the connection. Nice to meet you. You looking for me? Angel, Angel Quadre. We were looking to go to uh, the penitentiary to meet with uh, Orlando, Orlando Whist. Whist. I'll let you guys know what you got to know. OK. Thank so, you, and have a nice afternoon. I work at Manchester Holding. Oh, it's a local bank. Right. I know Orlando because he is the caretaker. It's an old, dilapidated building, and he's been there since it closed some time back in, the, I think, the middle of the 80s. The company that I work for owns the title to that building. He's, he's an eccentric fella. Yeah. Can you take us to see him? I can do that. Yeah, we'd like to see him. I don't want to. We're going to go see a man that we don't know in an environment we're not familiar with. Yeah. And, and you're saying it's been closed down. So he even gave us a bottle, a pint of liquor to give to Orlando. My next concern was to find Rusty and question him and figure out, you know, where was he, what happened, if he was the last person in the car, if he might have seen the killer, if he was the killer. Thank you. compound is complete anarchy. Everyone's just, you know, pretty hopeless out there. The sweepers had told Duncan that Reverend Crandall was driving the limousine. So we just wanted to go and find the Reverend and ask him some questions. We have visitors. Say, Rusty, do you have something for me? Actually, I just wanted to come talk to you. No one told you to give me a message? No. Why did you bring them to me? They just wanted to Why did you bring them in they here? They want to talk to I you. I told you to leave me alone. Absolutely pathetic. See you guys. Okay, so I'm supposed to give you a message. I'll give you a message. I had a real vision like I've never had before. I was in the car. I was with Hayden, taking him to meet Prudence Connor. And all of a sudden, I was completely blinded, like Paul on the road to Damascus. And in that moment, bang! Faith. My faith returned. Everything went black. And then I woke up. Where am I? I'm upside down. I'm disoriented. Hey. Everything's hey. water dripping on me. I'm being baptized again. Why? And I, I can't feel my body. But I see Hayden, and he's struggling. Help me, Rusty, help me! And then I see an angel glide toward him. And the angel struck him down with a lightning bolt. Well, I'm screwed up. Why? Let me put the white outfit on you so I can talk to the Rusty that was here Wednesday. 
That Rusty's dead. He's gone. And the true Rusty has been resurrected. Can I get a ride home? Leave me now! We are. Let's go. Crazy fool. He's nuts. Now, I don't care if it's 12 noon with the sun out. It's a spooky place to be walking around in. Hello? Hello? Orlando? Jeff. Basement? Hello? This old man's going to spook me. He come pops out of one of these doors. Angel. Hold on, hold on. Chill. Check this out. Hey, 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 hey. He's standing behind the door. Uh, hey! Come on, Mr. Woods. Why are you hiding behind that column? What do you want? We're investigating some criminal activity that happened in Sunrise. In our investigation, we came across the initials OSL. What are the Scarlet Lupin? A secret society of some sort? Well, sort of secret. It took place in, oh, late 30s, early 40s. They got their name from the lupin that grows wild along the coast. Now, this whole organization was made up of men from the town, businessmen, and, and bankers, and lawyers, and doctors, and, and the mayor, and the chief of police. And they just about run the town. Outsiders come in, they'd check them over and get rid of them if they didn't need them. They started businesses, they started the Kingfisher Cannery. They about made that town. Look at this. See that? You were a member. That's right. If I call out some names, would you tell me if they were members? No, I wouldn't. You couldn't tell me? I couldn't tell you. Out! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out! Come on, out of my house. My personality kicked in, and I realized, listen, I didn't fly all the way to New Hampshire um, to only have five minutes with this guy. We can't leave. I'm not going home after we just no, But don't approach him unless you have a question. Shh, shh. I realize we're not supposed to get out information if we don't need to with this guy. He's crazy. Yeah, but he's pissed he off right now. Don't matter. approach him unless you have a good question to ask him. And I see we tell him exactly what we're doing here. What we're trying to figure out, he can help us. But we're walking out after we just like, flew all the way here from sunrise. It's crazy. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Mr. West. So I went up there and I'm like, look, we're investigating these murders down in sunrise, and every time we go one of these murders, we find these flowers marked in the necks. The Lupin. Lupin was part of part of it all. That was in the in our clubhouse. In the hall. Oh, the power in that place. The power. It was magic. 1102 Kylie Street. 1102 Kylie Street? Yeah. That's on the second floor. You can't miss it. You'll know when you're there. That's what we need. Just like Jesus sat at the right hand of God, I sat at the right hand of Hayden DeBeck, and Hayden DeBeck had begun to believe that he was God. The angel killed Hayden DeBeck because he lost his way. That's why my angel killed him. That's why I killed the flints. I killed the flints oh. to punish them. I guess last night at a church meeting, Reverend Rusty told his entire congregation that he killed DeBeck and our other recent victims. He was then arrested by Chief Duncan. So let's get into what you got. Track one. We went over, we met with Mr. Whist. Turns out OSL is a secret society that existed here in the early 30s and 40s. Its members were all the prominent businessmen of Sunrise. OK. Um, he wouldn't reveal any members' names, so. But he did give us a, a lead. Told us to look at this address, which is 1102 Kylie Street on the second floor. We believe that that may be the uh, headquarters of the secret society. OK, track two, DeBeck's limo. 
The 357 shell that you recovered has come back, and it does match the other crime scenes. Whoever killed the general is the same person or persons who killed the other victims here in town. All right, let's get to what we're going to do today. Track one, the Killer Clue team. I want you to follow up this by going to the OSL meeting hall. Find out what this OSL was about and who was in it. Also, I'd like you guys to follow up then on the second part of it. A couple of days ago, you received a tip from the manager of the Trucker's Motor Lodge. He caught someone ransacking the same cabin where the burnt man killed himself. He saw a pickup truck flee the scene and he gave chase. Chief Duncan has found a truck matching the description out on the old fire road and has asked you to search the site. Look for anything that might tell us where something was ransacked in the disfigured man's motel room. Track two. I want you to assist Duncan and interrogate Reverend Crandall. Find out if he's the killer. There are certain things that happened at his crime scenes or these murders that only the killer would know. Right. Now, this is the situation, all right? I got two cameras set up in there. I'm going to have one of you guys go in here, one of you guys staying out here with me. Right. All right? Whoever's going in to interrogate uses this. Got an earpiece so you can hear what we're saying to you. OK. All right? So uh, who's going to go in there first? My father built the first church of Sunrise. My mom's mother built the church I grew up in. Did you study the Bible when you were growing up? Yeah. I've been in church probably since I was six, seven years old. Justice will bring joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Proverbs. 1102 Kylia, that's like in a locked up building. We're gonna have an expert in security train you in entry techniques. Hey Jeff, just stand right here so people don't see what we're doing. Nice. There's a dead bolt on this. It's gonna break. Hold the back of me. You're gonna wreck the door. It's one way to do it. Jeff was getting a little aggravated and getting on my nerves. The, the stretch of the investigation is getting to him. Ah. Bingo! Holy cow. That's amazing. Look at that. Yep. The Lupin. Check out that one. Dead man tells no tales. And we walked into what looked to me like a courtroom, covered with dust everywhere, cobwebs. It was a um, crime organization. After one of their sessions, they walked out and never came back. Like, they just ended one day. So what happened at uh, Miss Blodgett's house? I go into the house, and I'm going back into the kitchen, and I see her moving into the other room. And I chase her. And I knock her down. And I shave her head. It keeps getting stuck, and I'm just ramming it through. I grab the cord that's lying on the floor, and I, I wrap it around her neck, and I pull it tight from both ends. And I just hold on to it. And I'm looking right into her eyes, and she dies. But that's not how she died. And Thibodeau, there's a shovel. I started hitting him with his shovel. I beat him to death. Flint's was the worst. Abby was sitting on her bed. I stabbed her. I couldn't believe it. I was sticking a knife into this girl that I love so much. What do you say? He just, he's lying. We saw brain tissue, remember that. I can't hold him unless he says something to the kid. Reverend Rusty would kind of throw everything off by a little bit. I don't know if he was doing this on purpose, if he maybe is the killer, and he was doing that on purpose, because the killer, obviously, is a smart person. Hold on. Here we go. Look at this. Yeah. Recorded transcription of the final minutes, Order of the Scarlet Lupin. Order of the Scarlet Lupin. Say we take it. I mean... You going to bring this machine? Well, take it. All right. We know he's not the one. I mean, we've established. I don't think he is the killer now. I don't think he's the killer either. I got to kick him loose now. I'm going to have to kick him. I can't hold him with this. There's nothing legal about being crazy as long as you don't harm yourself or harm others. There you go. 
What's up, you guys? What's up? What's going on? How'd it go? Thank you, man. <laughs> you do everything that happened first, but then on the, the other question, he's like, I shaved her just and making like, that noise. And I was like, damn, that's pretty good. And then he goes, and then I just wrapped a cord around her neck. Do you think that he was just making all that up today? He could have. He could have made it all up. I mean, he could really be the killer. To the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The blue pickup truck was driven by, we suppose, the killer. One of our tracks was to go out to the fire road and find what was it that the killer was looking for. Let's see if this truck has the license plate on it. I'm taking a picture of it right now. <laughs> see what I found? 16 millimeter. Check this out. Infrared. OK, we're done. Obviously, a lot fell out of the back of this truck. Yep. So we're going to have to backtrack. Spare tire. There's even a picture out there. Why are you figuring How this out? How would that picture get way out there? I don't know. The wind gets under it. Duchamps. Yeah. The Duchamp family. Duchamps. Lost all hands. None of the wreckage was found. And not a soul was rescued. Without the whole family, all nine of them. With the circle around this one. It's the Duchamps. Who is it? Hey. Come on in. Rumor has it that you guys let Rusty go. Is that true? Um, I mean, he's crazy. I'm staying with C.R. Flint right now. And last night, he heard noises, you know, around. And, and he's, like, totally freaking out. And now I'm, like, fearful of my life and C.R.'s. And, and well, let me bring Alan downstairs to see what, Here, uh, come over and sit down. what happened. Just make sure that everything's OK. I mean, I'm scared for C.R. And I'm afraid of, of the Reverend. I mean, you saw how he treated me. Just Why did you bring them in they here? They want to talk to I you. told you to leave me alone! Alan, everyone's a little upset right now that the Reverend was released. Mary Elizabeth wants to know if you and I would like to go and stay at the Flint house tonight and sleep over with her and uh, CR. That's fine. So at what time do you want to move? Just as soon as you guys can. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you, guys. I like your sweater. Is this a, it says Abby on it? Yeah, it's my Abby sweater. Great, thank you. I'm not with the killer time. <laughs> nice, thanks, Mom. <laughs> We're here to stay in the night. Where is he, Is he? Yeah, he's actually upstairs. He's upstairs, he's sleeping, or? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you again. We'll be here. If you need anything, just let us I know. I can't do anything else but can I? <laughs> yeah, I just got some new clothes. Oh, cool. So, oh, maybe... fashion show? Yeah. Cool. We can I'm do that. Model Where do we need to stay? Just stop with him. Hey. Hello. Is it flattering? I, I like think it. so. I think it looks really. If I am not mistaken, that's called salmon. Got it. <laughs> she would come in and out of CR's room with these different shirts on that I'm assuming were Abby's clothes. Very nice, Abby. Wow. Abby. <laughs> she has CR calling her Abby telling her how pretty she looks in this new outfit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good night. I'll be outside if you need anything. Do not leave him alone. And what was going to happen was I was going to stay in a car and kind of keep an eye on the perimeter while Katie actually stayed inside the house with Mary Elizabeth and C.R. Flint. I don't make yourself comfortable. I don't know. I think it's really cute. <laughs> sure. Ah. Yeah. Alan. <laughs> I think he's absolutely adorable. Oh, adorable. And his awesome. accent is so cute. They're having a good conversation. They're upstairs. They're in Abby's old room. Mary Elizabeth's calling it her room. They're sitting talking about trips they've been on. But of everyone that was in there, who would you have hooked up with? 
if you could have. <laughs> if you could. Katie, come in. Oh, I'd have to agree with you with Alan. Alan? Yeah. He's really cute. He has a really nice body, too. Got his shirt on. I'm He's got a nice six pack. Hey. Get your radio on. It's not on. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks, Alan. I don't want to hurt me. I'm going to go upstairs and finish logging that stuff. Something may have happened to Katie. Mary Elizabeth could be this killer we're looking for. Angel to Allen, what's up? What's up? Something's happened in here. Hold on just a second. I heard a gunshot. Katie. Allen? Allen came in to see that was inside the house. Mary came Elizabeth from... came downstairs. She's downstairs right now. Katie Angel, Katie Angel. Hey, Katie. Okay. Check yeah. on Mr. Flint. Is he's, he all right? Okay. He's fine. Angel, we're just checking the basement right now. Over. Hey, Mary. We couldn't find Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth? I'm going to check the back door. Mary? The back door's open. We locked it from the inside. And that's when Katie started yelling. Oh, my god. What? I'm standing in the blood right now. So that was the next victim. Oh, my god. The shell casings here and everything. What? Katie. Oh, somebody came. We, we had the door locked from the inside. Katie to Angel. Katie to Angel. I'm Angel. Somebody just came in here. There's blood all over the back, and there's a shell on the floor. You need to call Gary. Duncan. And get them up here now. To the I'm doing that. We found a pool of blood with an ejected 357 casing in the kitchen near the rear entrance, but no sign of Mary Elizabeth. Check on the CR. What's going on? There's a shell, there's blood. Mary Elizabeth came downstairs. What? Oh, come on. No, yeah. no. Angel to Katie, what's up? Falcon's derived at the scene. You're on the phone right now. Wait, what, what happened? What happened? My granddaughter, my, my old dear granddaughter. Sam, you're going to take him to your place. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So where the hell were you? I was out front in the no. car. Nothing was you didn't going see on in the front. Did you see no, nothing was going on in the front. Did you search the basement? Yes, I've been all through the basement. You did search the yes, basement. Sir. God dog it! I was the babysitter last night. I was in the house. I had full responsibility, so I feel partially responsible for what happened. He was a little upset with us, actually. Well, he's probably a little overwhelmed with what's going yeah. in his town. This is a small town. Nothing happens here. All of a sudden, how many homicides have they had? Right. So now. He brings us in. He wants us to help solve this crime. Yet these crimes are still going on right underneath our noses. There's a good possibility the killer was maybe in that house and waiting for the opportunity. Right. So maybe he's down in the cellar just waiting to strike. Mary Elizabeth, I don't believe, is with us anymore. The blood has been confirmed by Dr. Bowden that it's hers. So she's definitely not with us anymore. Anyone who tries to help us, the killer has killed. I feel like Mary Elizabeth was trying to help us. I was actually the one who dumped it into the ocean. Rusty! Leave me! She felt threatened. She was she scared about us letting scared. Rusty go today. Do you feel that he is still a suspect? He told me to beware the horror of Babylon. So I asked him to elaborate, and I said, who's the whore of Babylon? He's like, who do you think it is? And I said, I think it's Mary Elizabeth. And he said, you're right, that's who it is. And he said, beware of her. Do you think that Did he killed him? Do you think he's the killer? He could have completely, he could have lied about everything. and. Uh... But you, you interrogated him. Right, I What's don't. What's the outcome? You're giving me a report. I think he's just nuts. Just, I think he's, yeah, just mentally unstable. OK, track one to review the killer clue team. You went over to the OSL. 
and discovered information about this logo and secret organization. Uh, we went in and we found uh, this little glass casing and we found two antique wire spools, audio tapes. We figured. We actually brought the recorder too because just in case the experts didn't have one, maybe they can find how to use it. Right. We tried to get our experts to be able to get it hard drived into our computer. Really? It may take a couple days to be able to do it. Okay, you guys also I gave you a follow up into the uh, state police uh, scene out there with the stolen truck. In that truck, you found this 16 millimeter camera and a roll of unexposed film. Okay, what's unique about this? It's a inf infrared. What else about the infrared that strikes you? You shoot it at night. The same film we saw in the beginning. Right on. So what does that tell us? Killer might have been in this car or in the pickup truck? Okay, then what happened? We backtracked and we saw this picture that was from the hotel room, but the painting. This painting here? Correct. Sure enough, at the back of it, there was a sealed black envelope, just like the two envelopes that we collect every uh, third day with the killer's game. And um, honestly, it was probably there since 1971. Right. We happened to go and rip the back of the painting off, and we found a photo, a family photo of the Duchamps. OK, now how do we know it's the Duchamps? Right in the back, toe at the bottom, Thanksgiving dinner, 1940, I believe it says. Duchamp Thanksgiving dinner, 1940. The little boy it has a circle. Has a I circle. see it. Anything else unique about the photo, besides the boy being circled? How many people are in the photo? There's nine. OK. Possibly, this is just a guess. It could have been this burn victim. This is from 1940. He was not lost out in sea until 41. My earliest memory was in 1941 when I was eight years old. And I'm going to say the burnt man placed this picture in there before he committed suicide. The and burnt man won. placed this there, or somebody did, and then the killer knew, and the killer was trying to find it. There's a connection between the Duchamps, OSL, the town of Sunrise. Navy. It all connects somewhere. We just don't have the glue to put it all together right now. All right, this morning, Samantha Larrabee discovered these two envelopes in her diner on a table. Nobody saw who put them there, and no one noticed anyone special in the diner. It's basically saying, come catch me. So I'm going to open it now. question is, what Bible chapter says, when justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous? Terror to evildoers. Proverbs, isn't it? Yeah, but that asks for a chapter. The Bible have an index? To what? It's in Proverbs. Yeah. Here you go. Proverbs 21, 15. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Proverbs 21, 15. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> right. Yay! I'd get kicked out of my church if I missed it. Was it Frank? No. Yay! I'd give him a kiss for that one. All right. So Emerson Bowden has been eliminated from our suspect board. Good work, you guys. Again, I'll be back at 5 p.m. to open the black envelope and play the killer's game. I'll see you then. OK. OK. Thank you. I've never been afraid of uh, change, uh, fearful of the unknown. And this is like uh, a prime example of you don't know what's out there, but it, it intrigues some people. Right. Curiosity is hard to control. Yeah. And just like the cat, sometimes it'll kill you. If Katie gets picked by the team, I got to go. I like, I got to do it again. It's now time to play the killer's game and open the black envelope. The entire group, excluding the lifeguard, make the choice for the first person to go out. Then the lifeguard will make the choice for the second person. Let's begin, Alan. This is probably going to be the hardest decision. Both Jeff and Katie have become good friends of mine. With Jeff, <clears throat> he kind of scared me the other day. We went to uh, meet Frank Kovic. Let's not be a hypocrite, Mario. You never told us about you were having an affair with Sam. His personality came out, his true personality. He let Frank have it. He doesn't have a lot of respect for the townspeople right now. Ah, bingo! The only thing I can say is that I've spent time being Alan's roommate and staying up late laughing. We, we are both a little bit just guys, you know? Um, out of 
my two choices, Jeff or Alan, I think that um, Alan has a lot more respect for the people of Sunrise and what they're going through. The group has chosen to go out to the killer location, Katie. Katie. Lifeguard. Well, my choice is Jeff. My reasons why, well, one is that um, I made a promise. And two is because he's expressed his concern and his reasons for another adrenaline rush. Um, I'm going to give him that second chance. Hiller has said that he's going to leave two locations in this black envelope that need to be searched that two of you will be going out, but only one of you will be coming back. Jim, I have the two people that are chosen stand up, and you can give one to the person that the group chose, which is Katie, and the second goes to Jeff. Katie, could you open up and read where you're going tonight? I'm going to Sunrise High School. Jeff. Gary, I'm going to go to the Kingfisher Cannery. What I'll need is both of you to enter the booth records your last will and testament, make your choice for who you want to be the next lifeguard, and then pack your bags. Wow, just, wow. I never thought I was gonna get chosen by the group tonight just because um, Alan told me that he was gonna choose Jeff. And uh, wow, like, you think you know people. I had to get it for good luck. See you, dude. Good luck, go Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Got your mask. What's up, Mo? Good luck. Take care. All right, man. Sorry. Come this way. Come back. I'm realizing now, except for you, mm -hmm. all the girls. They're all gone. Listen, I really hope uh, everything works out for you. Here I am. Can you hear me? Don't be afraid of the unknown. Embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> so we are near now. Oh, up here by the high school. Safiri Salama, which means good journey. What'd you say? I hope Katie comes back.
I think I'm upset with his, his entire attitude about just about everything. He mistreats Kristen. And then when we try to make amends, when we try to correct the situation, he's not willing to, to bend a little. Kristen, <laughs> she went out five times in a row, man. <laughs> She sure wasn't volunteering, I'll tell you that. You know, at first, Kristen and I didn't get along as well. But but afterwards, she was willing to do whatever was necessary to make the, the atmosphere better in the in-house. And he wasn't willing to. So you know what? I don't. We don't need someone like that in the house. So I was willing to put him out. What's up, big daddy? Ah, damn. My little girl's gone. Would you doubt me? I wanted my little girl to come back, man. Huh? I wanted my little girl to come back. Yeah, I'm sure you did. What do we have? Feel that, Angel. Feel it. No. Feel it. No, Just keep touch it. it. Keep it to yourself, touch your man. personality. You don't want to touch it. You Why should I get my hands blood. dirty? Why That's should I get my hands dirty? You want to feel it? Exactly. How many times you been out, Angel? On what? On, On the killer, killer clue? clue? None. Exactly. Right. It's your personality. What? What's my personality? Realize this, Angel. What do I need to realize? Bigger Give me a risk. motivational speech. Bigger please. the risk, bigger the reward. Okay. Remember that. So you made the risk and I get the rewards. You know, it's, it's a funny way, Angel. I come up these stairs and almost like you wish I died. Well, I'll and tell you honestly, sad. I wanted Katie to come back. Yeah. You look at the anger in your voice. It's you know amazing. what it is? You know what it is? Yo, I'll tell you honestly. Yo, who? Jeff. Yeah. That's People like I mean. you and me don't get along. The only way you're going to ever win anything in your life. You have no Yo, ambition. you're a model. I'm a fireman. Yeah. All you do is pose this for This has living. a whole new meaning of safe house for you. You wait. Oh, really? And you're threatening me? So if you're threatening me, bring it, brother. Bring it. Stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of murder in Small Town X. Fire in the house! Three investigators. You're getting close. Five suspects. This town was founded on murder. Who will capture the Sunrise Killer? I solved this case. She was engineered by science to be human perfection, but she's about to face science's newest creations. Not perfect and definitely not human. Dark Angel premieres on its new night Friday, September 21st on Fox.